Father, in Jesus' name, we give you this hour. We ask for divine wisdom as we start and grow businesses for your honor and glory, for the kingdom's sake. Lord, would you please bless our uh, the work of our hands? Please guide our <coughs> excuse me thoughts and our 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 thoughts, our words. And Father, may you just receive all the honor and glory from today and from the results of today that may extend to generations because of us being obedient today in building these enterprises for the purpose of bringing glory to you in serving others and showing the love of Jesus Christ in the workplace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, let me see here. Admit, uh, we'll get everyone in here. Uh, yes, please admit then. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I want to do, and I'm going to be sending you all later today, uh, the, the course notes that I'm using today. Um, I don't want to do it in advance because I want you to take notes and I want you to just write it down. All right. But, uh, but until then, uh, but I will be sending this out to you uh, here in, in, in just a bit uh, later on uh, this day. And, uh, and I do trust that you've had a wonderful day uh, there in, uh, in Kenya. All right. So if you've got your pins ready, how we're going to do this is I'm going to uh, start with one person and then we will um, uh, go to the next and, and so forth. So after I go through it with the first person, everyone will understand what we're looking for. Uh, what, how we're trying to do this, and, uh, and and it will be expedited from that point on. So, uh, Zipporah, uh, if you would uh, kindly uh, share your video and, and audio, and then what we will do is you and I will uh, be able to, we'll start with you, all right? Okay, and your audio there. Ah, uh, wonderful. Okay, so uh, and you'll want to you'll want to write down your answers so that you remember because I'm going to write some of the things down so that we can kind of keep moving moving through this. Um, so uh, first of all, tell me what what your business idea is for for this class for the semester. Uh, currently, I'm keeping a few chickens. Okay. And that is exactly what I want to grow. Okay, uh, so how many chickens do you have now? I have uh, 40 of them. Okay. 40. 14 or 40? 40, 40. 40. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so, and then what is your goal? Uh, how, um, what, what uh, like of this? Of this, uh, like, what are you trying to get your business to? Yeah, you see, that's a very small uh, number currently that I'm working with mm. because uh, to, um, it's twofold. I sell eggs, and uh, when they have overgrown, I also sell the, or fully grown, I sell the chickens themselves. So, what has been happening is once they are grown, I sell all of them and then I start all over again but uh, i'd like to grow into this space whereby i have so much so that the business keeps continuing all the time instead of me stopping at some point yeah so what so what's hap what's been happening is you're you you let's say you have 40 chickens you raise them you sell the 40 but then you're having to start again and wait and then sell them. So yes. it's, it's a cash flow issue and you, you won't got to get to where it's consistent 
cash flow, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me ask this is, uh, do you currently with uh, how many chickens do you need to sell on a monthly basis to support yourself, you know, your family, what, what, with whatever your objective is? Yes, if, if on a monthly basis, I could sell about a hundred chickens, that will be very sustainable for the family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is the cycle? Uh, how long is that cycle from when you acquire the chicken? Uh, how long is it until you're able to sell them? Yeah, like uh, for the chickens to start first to produce eggs, it is six months. And now it will, they will go about a year yeah, to when they are still producing the, the eggs. Then from there, I must sell. Otherwise, the sales go, the production goes down. After that, so 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 so, say that again. So you got six months from the time yes. you get them before egg. the egg production. Bef okay, and then what's the six months after that? Now, the, the, from there, now I get the eggs which I happen to sell for a year. And then after that, I must sell the chickens because they don't produce anymore. I see. I see. Okay. So yes. you're not going to keep the chicken past basically two years old, year and a half, two years old, right? No, I'm not able to. Right. Uh, so mm -hmm. you got your business model is going to be selling the eggs, yes. selling eggs and selling chickens. Yes. Right For butcher. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um. And yet the objective is that you've got to be able to sell 100 chickens per month. So we need, we will end up needing to have 100 chickens. Um, we'll end up needing to have 100 chickens that are basically one and a half years old that you've had since birth, but that we have to have that on a monthly basis. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. And now I understand. It's hard for me not to want to jump right in and just say, okay, how do we do this? But uh, uh, I've, because of the different ideas that, uh, that I have, but I want to, um, I, I want, I, I, but we're, we're doing this structured for this portion. Um, I do have a, a practical question. Do you have the space to do that right now? The space is, yes, it is there. Because you're basically doubling the number of chickens you have. Well, you're doing more than that, but. For, for the space for the 40 chicken, of course I have, but there is enough space to do more. If that's what you're asking. Yes. Yes, I, I have enough space even to maybe to construct, uh, to construct maybe an, uh, another house for the chickens. Okay. But uh, the number I've kept to that right now. Right, right. Um, I want you to be thinking about something. I, I want you to do the math and figure out how many chickens you need to have at any given time mm -hmm. in order to achieve your goal. You can't just have, I mean, basically to sell a hundred chickens, it means you have to have them each of those different ages, right? So at some point you have to get to where you're acquiring basically a um, hundred plus chickens a month so that you can then, you know, raise them through the duration, but by staggering the purchasing of those, um, which is great because you're gonna pay for those out of cash flow. From what you have now, which you don't get all your cash flow all at once, right? It comes in, trickles in, and so um, it will work to be able to stagger those out. But but if you have if you're selling a hundred chickens, I mean, 
really you're what you're telling me and you have to think about this in your in your heart because this is kind of the next question i'm going to ask but um you do understand that to sell 100 chickens a month when they're 18 months old uh because you would have taken the eggs from them for a year and you sell them when they they turn a year and a half uh that means that at at any given time you have to have 1800 chickens that is possible okay that is in order to yes. in order to sell 100 chickens per month you will need 1800 chickens the difference is you're going to need to buy those um uh each month uh you know at some point um uh, if you don't need to buy it every time because uh, i don't have to sell the eggs all the time I can right. keep the eggs because they're, they're, they're traditional ones. Yeah, so they can be laid there. Which yeah, so you can have your breeding program. Yes. You basically yes. will have a breeding program. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know the, the how often they can produce and reproduce and all of that? Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, pardon? Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, yes. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry, I'm using my phone and it was interrupted. Oh, that's um, fine. In three weeks, three weeks, you have your eggs. From from once they're turned six months old, they can start reproducing? Yes, they can start re reproducing, yes. And if I start breeding in, in every three weeks, I have the new breed. And uh, so then you just need to back into the numbers of how many do I need to be breeding in order to build up to that number. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Fantastic. So, and you answered the second question that you're going to end up seeing on the sheet uh, whenever we give, uh, I send about, but it is, what would you like to see happen with your new business? That's where we talk about the objectives. Like, what are we really trying to accomplish? Um, so let's talk about some nuts and bolts then. Um, uh, your, uh, you, well, actually I'll give these, uh, let me, let me move on to the next one uh, because what I'm going to want to plant in your mind uh, is a, a, a kind of the strategy. Um, so once you have the infrastructure, you have the eggs, you've got the chickens, what is the method to make sure you can sell that volume of eggs? What is the, in, in getting a brand, what's your business name? You know, what is your, uh, how do you build relationship with customers and with, uh, you know, butchers and to be able to be that supplier, you know? Um, so uh, I, I, we'll, we'll get to that here in just a moment. So Zavora, very good. Thank you. A good exercise. That uh, makes it makes us think a little bit and and kind of figure it out. And now we clearly know where we're trying to go. Uh, so thank you very much for 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 sharing. Um, all right, uh, Helen, uh, you're next. If you would kindly unmute and 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 share your video. We will get to the correct place here. Okay. All right. Greetings. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so tell me what kind of business you're wanting to start uh, or that you have, um, what you're looking to do. What, you, what are you thinking about? Yes, uh, currently I started last year, um, music school. Okay. Well, we yeah, we teach students to, they learn music instruments to play. And then within that, we have a music production where we record music, uh, audio and video. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, and so what, um, so you kind of have a recording studio, that, that's good, that makes sense. Um, just give me some quick stats. How many students do you have so far? Uh, and, and, and what are you looking to do there? Uh, so far, we, we have eight students. Okay. That, that come different days. Yes. And um, we are looking, I'm looking to have like 40 students who will be coming on a monthly basis. Yeah. And then, and then for 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 the production, for those who want to record their music, 
at least uh, if we, uh, I'm looking at having maybe 15 clients on a monthly basis, which for now I don't have. I have like um, around six clients or seven clients a, a month. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, very good. That that helps me understand what you're doing. Uh, out of curiosity, what uh, is it? Is it just musical instruments or is it vocal as well? Or yes. we do instruments and vocal, um, teaching them how to learn to sing. Uh, and then play instruments, as well as uh, at the end of it, um, we do a concert. Okay. Ah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, the grand finale. That is great. Okay, excellent. Um, it, so you've got a, wh where do you do this from? Do you have to rent space? I, I currently, we, we I have space. I'm not renting, so we did from uh, a specific place that we have. Good. Okay, that's what I I because uh, my mind goes to to expenses and operational fixed costs and things that can quickly drain you, especially in the beginning when you're trying to grow. So, um, and it's also helpful to understand, you know, what kind of a runway. Uh, the, the less costs you have for your business that are fixed costs anyway, uh, the longer you can sustain, especially through downturns or pandemics or anything like that. So I, I, I like that you are, you know, did not go rent facilities and try to, you know, do all these things. Uh, I, it reminds me of a, of a story. And it was, especially as it relates to, to music and, 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 and artists and anyone that has a craft. And it was a world renowned uh, violinist. And, uh, you know, obviously extremely expensive guitar. It was his guitar, that's what he used. He came out uh, he was doing a concert at uh, like in Carnegie Hall in New York City or something. He came out on stage. Obviously, they handed him his violin, comes out on stage, started into the music. And he realized something wasn't right. And so he stopped and he said, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be right back. He goes backstage. He realizes that someone had stolen his guitar or his uh, violin and replaced it with a much inferior violin. He had a decision to make. He goes back out on stage and he said, ladies and gentlemen, I am now going to give a concert to you and show you that the music uh, is in the artist, is in the performer, not in the instrument. And he began to play one of the greatest, you know, concerts he ever gave. And I think as I reflect on some of these things, if the music is in you, you don't need the expense of a space until you can comfortably afford it. It doesn't need to, to strap you. Uh, or put stress on you. Uh, what you have to do is continue to use the gifts God gave you and your teachers uh, the, to um, uh, until they are beating a path to your door and you cannot mm -hmm. contain them uh, because the it's the service. If you're providing what they want and need and you become known as the, the place to go to get this training, uh, you know, We'd go to, you'd go to a warehouse, you'd go to a back room somewhere that makes no sense anywhere to get that information, that wisdom from, from that, uh, from those individuals. So well done on that. 
a lot of people try to focus on the other stuff first. And I think that it's where most entrepreneurs, they're just doing what, they're just copying what they see other people do. They just see a business go up. They don't know that the person has been doing that business in their garage for 10 years or in their, in, in, a, in a closet, you know, in their, in their bedroom or some, they don't know that they just see signs go up and think, Oh, I need a hundred thousand dollars to go do this too. No, you don't. Uh, these people had a business before they had a business, you know, and that's what you're talking about. So very well done. Okay. Um, uh, Anthony, uh, greetings and uh, glad you were able to join us. Go ahead and kindly unmute and uh, show your video, uh, share your video and, and we'll get uh, going on your business. Yes, uh, good evening. I was struggling to join. Ah, no problem. I think uh, I, I saw a couple of people trying to join uh, that the team was helping, but um, uh, I think maybe they did not have good Wi-Fi or something um, because it they kept trying to get them to join, but it would they could not for some reason. So, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, yeah. So what we're doing is we're going through a, a, a workbook that uh, I will be sharing with the class uh, uh, later uh, today, but um, I wanted to kind of walk through it first so that we know where we are. And then I'm taking notes so I know what the business are so I can keep it tra keep track throughout the semester, uh, yeah. the school year. Here. Yeah. So, um, so what is your business idea or what are you doing? Um, what are you looking to do? Yes, I was comparing things, eh? and uh, one thing that was coming into my mind is uh, an opportunity that I, I came across recently uh, about uh, a company that has origin from the U.S. Uh, called uh, Bright Future Superior Unique Manufacturer of America, dealing with uh, supplements. And uh, I was trying to to compare with what I have been doing before, because actually I have not been in a permanent employment for a quite some time since 2008. I have been doing small businesses and insurance. And uh, uh, as I was going through the materials that were sent for us uh, this week, I discovered that. Uh, I am a victim of some of the things that you are sharing in the book because I have tried several businesses and uh, one actually really hurt me hard uh, whereby I was doing car hire and I fall in a trap of uh, bad people. The other thing I was doing is uh, uh, about uh, uh, properties, selling plots here and there, but uh, once in a while. So when I came across this company, I have enrolled as a member and I was trying on uh, to, to check on the issues of uh, the money that I need to invest. And then I found that uh, the money that I need to put in to start as a member is uh, a little amount and I'm not paying for an office. I have an, a place to operate on. And then in a few months, eh, I have been able to realize that eh, if I can get the right mind about the business, it is a business that I can grow in because it's about people and they're moving the product. I have shared the opportunity now with the seven people and I have realized now I have like a team of 140 people and joining my network and the, uh, when I was checking the monthly income for this month, I have uh, discovered it has gone to uh, $240. That is the, uh, I'm expecting to be paid on the end of this week. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is a very different bit. Now that is in the US that is called uh, network marketing, correct? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, what's yes. the name of the company? It is a Bright Future Superior Unique Manufacturer of America. It's called, uh, amplification is BF Suma. 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, I haven't heard of them. Um, I was on the board yeah. of DSA, uh, Leadership Council, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Direct Selling Association. Uh, so mm -hmm. all, uh, the, all of the major network marketing companies, uh, Amway, uh, Herbalife, you know, uh, uh, World Ventures, mm -hmm. some of the others, uh, but, um, you know, they were all a part of it. And I, I was CEO of a network marketing company. Um, yeah. And so uh, the nutraceutical business is very interesting. That, but that business model is is uh, very specific as well, and it re it's a different skill set uh, because mm -hmm. it is a people business. And it, but you were in the insurance business or are in the insurance business, which is a people business too. Um, so uh, I think that would be good. Uh, it does sound like uh, you know if that is your. How many months have you uh, been in that organization, uh, Anthony? Okay, we may have. Ah, there you are. Yes. H how long were you? Uh, have you been in a part of that organization? It is uh, like uh, four months now. Four months. Okay. Because that yeah. helps me understand because I understand their compensation plans. And uh, yeah. uh, the first couple months, a lot of times the numbers are artificially inflated, obviously, to keep people yeah. from quitting, <laughs> to get through the discouraging parts uh, for yeah. people that they thought were going to do it don't. And so, uh, but if it's your fourth month and you're still doing, you're getting that check, that's, that's great. Um, but I'll tell you, I mean, there, there, there are still, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure they have their training systems and, you know, information. Uh, one of those books, you, have you heard of Amway before? Uh, sorry, come up again. Have you heard of Amway? Amway. No, 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 I've not heard of Amway. Okay. They are the largest network marketing company in the world. They were about $14 billion in sales per year. Um, and, and, and they're the largest. Well, they used uh, both my Born to be Rich and Born to Dream books on their training program. So the very ones that yeah. you, you, you read this week. Um, I think the 90-day uh, race, though, uh, was one that I wrote. Specific, uh, it applies to everything. But um, it was extensively used in the network marketing space. And so yeah. um, uh, I think you, that book especially will be very beneficial to you because there is much that I could say about that particular industry in terms of training from having uh, 425,000 distributors ourselves. Uh, yeah. so it was a, that's no small thing. Um, but, but here's what I want you all to understand. Almost well, without exception, all three of you uh, are talking about lifestyle businesses. Uh, a lifestyle business is different than uh, a large enterprise. But what I like about this is that you all understand what your objective is. And your objectives are in line with your uh, expectations. So, because a lot of people say, "Well, I want to uh, get to this level," and they and they, I want to have this amount of money or this amount of you know what have you, and they don't align those. This the, being at this level does not give you this lifestyle. Uh, but what each one of these things does is it does give you freedom. It does give you, you're not in an office, uh, you know, just responding to emails all day, every day. Um, there is a, even though your company, your business may have hours, uh, you will end up having other people who are able to, to do those and to do the work on your behalf. Uh, which is important. Uh, uh, you can that way at some point it allows you to lead the company and others to work in the company. 
Um, but in the beginning, you've got to do both. You are the worker and the leader. Uh, you have to do the operations plus the strategy and the vision. Um, and so I think that is, uh, that is critical. Let me make one final note here um, on, on Anthony's business. Okay. All right. So, so does that make sense though? Lifestyle business. And I'm going to contrast that. So there's lifestyle business and then there are enterprises. Uh, enterprises is where it, it's much bigger than something you can just do or control. What I love about your businesses though, is that you're not trying to do large enterprises because one of the greatest principles of entrepreneurship is start with where you are with what you have. You, you should always just start where you are with what you have. That, I mean, you can't start anywhere else. <laughs> you can't start where you wish you were or in somebody else's starting point or we all are where we are. And uh, we don't have to be, here. we won't be here tomorrow uh, in the same place. It's, it, it changes. So uh, it, it, is, it is incumbent upon us uh, to to make sure that our that that we are that we're moving forward. So in, in doing what we're supposed to do, the daily disciplines, the daily habits. The biggest challenge with small business entrepreneurs is a lack of discipline. It's they 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 don't get out of bed early enough, or they lollygag too much. They spend too much time on social media, or they sit around too too much. They talk too much. They don't get enough done uh, and you don't have to be busy. Uh, I am highly productive, but I'm very calm uh, in doing so. Uh, I'm not rushed, I'm not hurried. Uh, I'm methodical, but I'm all, and I'm at peace, great peace. But I can be more productive than, than most people. Um, but that is because I'm highly focused as well. So, these are the things that I would encourage you to be thinking about, uh, that you need to really understand uh, the type of businesses that you chose is a lifestyle business, which gives you great flexibility and it, it can uh, give you a great income. Uh, the other thing that I like is that they are service businesses. The reason why service businesses are my favorite kind of businesses to start, especially for a, a first time entrepreneur is because uh, they, you got to generate cash flow. You have to eat, you have to pay the bills and a service business can do that for you. Um, later on down the road, after you've built a great income with a service business, you can work on other dreams that you have that may require capital, or maybe they don't return, uh, give you any cash for a year or two years because it's a long-term investment. We're working on a water program in Africa right now that, um, uh, you know, we, we don't, we have to put in major amounts of money and we don't see any, we don't see the first penny, not a penny for two years. And we're putting tons of money in. And so, um, but, but you don't start there, you know, um, I don't even want to start there now. It's just that in this particular case, there is no other, uh, really it's what we had to do, but we also are using leverage. So there's other principles that come in into play because you still don't want to use your money even when you have your money, uh, if possible. Depends on how what it is. So like with the chickens, for example, uh, uh, it's going to be best uh, for Zipporah to breed and then to uh, reinvest. There's a difference between reinvesting in your business in revenue, in in, in things that will increase and generate more revenue. The problem is many entrepreneurs put their resources into the wrong part of their business. When I would go into a company as CEO, I didn't tell them, hey, I need $30 million because I want to do this, this, and this. I said, whatever resources, financial resources I need, I will find in your current budget because I have not seen a company yet that has the money, they're just spending it on the wrong things. They are reinvesting it in the wrong areas and it's not giving you the return and the results that you want. That's why you hired me. 
And every time I redirected spending and was able to accomplish the goal. So uh, reinvestment, taking proceeds, uh, you've got to be very smart financially where, where the money that comes in, part of it goes to pay yourself and the bills, and then part of it goes to pay uh, to reinvest in the business. Um, that's that. And by the way, if you ever have to choose, um, you know, you, you're going to have to make that choice for you, but you've read the textbooks. And so you understand where I stand on that. Um, and I think it also depends on, on several factors. It depends on if you were, if you were a good steward of the funds that God trusted you with, with the revenue, with the income. Uh, and if you can't be faithful with $10, he's not going to bless you with a million. <laughs> uh, so you don't wait until you have it to be doing it. Um, it must be done now. So that is what, that is what, uh, that, that is what we, we pray. So with the various enterprises, just know that you want to reinvest the proceeds in the right place. That's the key, investing, reinvesting it right back into the place. So, um, so uh, let me review, uh, Anthony, uh, you, uh, uh, how many people did you say you have in your total network right now? I, I think, um, okay, it was over a hundred. Uh, Anthony, uh, if you can unmute, yes. How many people are, did you say were in your network right now? Sorry. Uh, how many people did you say were in your network right now? Uh, 140. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, let me, I'm just taking notes. Uh, how, how many are you wanting to get to? Uh, my projection is uh, is to get like uh, 500 people personally within a year. And that's in your total network? And, and not really. Uh, I am doing a projection. If I can uh, be able to sponsor like 500 people, and they do the duplication, uh, it can be more than uh, 2,000 or 3,000 in a year. It can. Um, the greatest network marketers that have ever lived, mm -hmm. uh, usually only personal, personally sponsored a total of 50 or 60 people. Yeah. So, you need you're going to want to think about that objective and i would encourage you to kind of think through your strategy a little bit more uh because that was the mistake that i made whenever i first started when i was uh, 18 with that um yeah. was that i thought it was about i had spawned, i had enrolled 72 in one year and i thought oh this is you know which i had set a record and they thought it, I hung the moon and the stars, you know, and there was the golden boy of that company. But mm -hmm. that's not the secret. It wasn't throwing mud up against the wall and seeing what sticks like that. It was building the relationships and and that were that were higher, bigger than the results. And so uh, and then whenever I started really being mentored by the top people in that industry, um, you start to realize that the highest income earners uh, are really the most they've ever sponsored in their whole life for 50 or 60 people. Oh, yeah. So, so rethink the amount of work you do and be thinking about the system. Because this is the difference that I was explaining to everyone but uh, a few minutes ago, the difference between an enterprise, a large enterprise, a large company and a small business and an entrepreneur. Um, is the difference is usually that the companies, the big companies, they have a system that works. Um, and I tell small business owners, if your system, a lot of times they look at me and go, I am the system. You're looking at the system. I'm the one who shows up and fixes the cars and changes the brakes and, you know, does everything. And then I go home and I, and I said, if your system goes to sleep at night, you, it's not a system. <laughs> 
you don't have a system. Yeah. If you can't disappear tomorrow for six months, you don't have a you don't have a, a you know a large a large system. You may have a great cash flowing business, and that is the objective for each one of you because the businesses you're in are service businesses, and so I want to see uh, each one of those uh, flourish. Those are absolutely uh, the cash flowing businesses, uh, and then so that eventually you can parlay that into. You can just keep that business or sell that business or uh, go into uh, future businesses that you uh, and desires that you have. Uh, but you'll have the capital and the resources to self fund those uh, to a large degree. Uh, but that is important, uh, Anthony, that you you reconsider how much work you personally do on that front, because I don't want your all your work to go in the wrong part. You're going to do the, the same amount of work, but most people put it in the wrong direction again. Um, yeah. And uh, the biggest, you know why a lot of people in that industry revert to, to doing it that way? It is because uh, you are the only one who can control you. You can't control the others. What it requires is you to lead the others. Well, uh, but you may be more comfortable doing, the, you, know, you know, just bull in China shop, doing the work yourself. I'll work 24 hours a day. I'll do the, you know. And you, so you're, you're more comfortable doing that, but the growth, the growth, the personal growth that has to happen is going to be uh, that you've got to get better at leading uh, those, um, enrolling those in their vision. Why are they doing it? Uh, not, not selling your vision on why you do it on them, but why would they do it? You know, that vision for themselves is the only way that works. That's leadership. You know, my dad um, has been a pastor for, for de uh, 40 years, over 40 years. And I remember whenever I was uh, running my first big company and I had, uh, what, uh, 1,500 employees or 1,500 employees. And... Um, I had taken my parents on vacation. I remember what my dad and I had talking about, I was talking about, you know, you only have a few hundred, I've got 1500. <laughs> and he said, he said, son, <laughs> he said, there's a big difference between leading people that are paid with a paycheck to follow you and leading volunteers. It requires greater leadership. Because they can quit at any time. You can't tell them what to do. Especially when you sit here and tell them they're in their own business. Well, if I'm in my own business, then I'm not in your business. Stop telling me what to do. Yeah. You have to, the, the leadership is, is what you need in, in that element. Now, I will tell you, the better leader you become at leading a volunteer army, the better leader you become at leading a paid army. And so I'm very thankful that I've had to lead people that did not get paid for partnering with me. They partnered because they believed in what we were doing. They partnered because they believed in what we accomplished together. They, that, that, those are the reasons why we joined forces. And, uh, and then, of course, that makes it, you much more effective uh, and respected with paid leadership because you are leading them much the same way you do not use the iron fist you don't use it's grace under control or, or excuse me a strength under control which is what the bible says is meekness you know so by using that uh it allows us to better lead our employees our staff and yes indeed our volunteers and good companies have all good companies have all of them uh, word of mouth is the number one form of advertising and marketing, as we know, which is why that business relies mm -hmm. on it. But for any industry, word of mouth is still the best. No matter how many millions of dollars companies spend on marketing and advertising, word of mouth is still the best. So here's the question. Uh, that's your volunteer army. What are your What is your volunteer army, those customers that you don't pay to market for you, what message, marketing message, are they giving out? Are they singing your praises and giving you great reviews and giving you great word of mouth referrals uh, and telling people that it's a pleasure doing business with, with Helen, a pleasure 
you know, it's great. Uh, Zipporah's chickens are just delightful. Um, or, or is it a matter of, you know, it's kind of inconsistent. I don't really like this. It's, they're hard to do business with. They're just not nice. Uh, you know, these are a lot of the things that you hear people say they're, they're pushy, uh, or, or they're not, uh, they're too lethargic. I mean, it's, there's this pendulum and it's, so, so you've got to find and be the leader uh, of, of, of your, each of your businesses. So very good. So, uh, and, and we'll, once again, you'll be getting this uh, workbook a little bit later so that you're able to uh, fill in the blanks with some of the things. Uh, I just didn't want people working ahead too much. And so don't want to send it uh, uh, in advance. But uh, I do want to also uh, extend our greetings to uh, uh, Francis Chiete. Uh, uh, greetings, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry I have logged in a little bit uh, late. Oh, no, you're fine. We're glad that you're able to be here. Uh, but uh, feel free um, to share uh, your uh, business idea uh, okay. or what you're looking to do or are doing. Uh, thank you for, for, for that opportunity. And as I began, I said I, I, I logged in a little bit late. Was, uh, today was uh, actually not working. I was building my child with my children who were going to school. And I had of them going into different schools. Ah. So I had to go into the different schools. So in the process, I got mixed up and the timing came my challenge. So I'm very sorry about that. Oh, uh, very uh, 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 okay. On the front of uh, business, uh, I do not uh, intend to start a new business now, but uh, because um, I have a full-time employment and I have been running my own consultancy farm, that is what I want to grow, the consultancy farm. Consultancy firm, yes. Yeah, I have sustained it for, for several years now. And now this year, I, I decided to, to change the, the, the way I operate. I was working with uh, another gentleman who worked in another town, Mombasa. That's where I started the business. And now uh, I have grown with that gentleman until now we reached a point and we say now, must form a partnership in the consultancy farm. It is a professional farm. I'm, a, I'm an accountant, a professional accountant. The business is registered under my name, but now I admitted the gentleman to be my second partner. So we are two in the business. So because of the dynamics of uh, when it starts to grow that way, I thought I should give it more time and I should understand uh, what, how best should I uh, start to to, to approach it, to make it grow. Uh, previously, uh, we had uh, uh, eight uh, staff members, but uh, due to COVID-19, we had to freeze down to four. Yeah, we, are, we are now having four um, employees, uh, but at the same time now, uh, the, the gentleman who has joined me is now full-time in the business. I'm the one who is uh, not fully in the, but I mean, I'm part-time in the business, but I work in the night, working weekends. I work when I'm on leave, because that's how I work. And I've sustained that for about over 10 years now. But now I want to make it better. Yes. Yeah, so basically that's where, I, uh, that's where I am now. And I'm yet now to enter into the uh, materials that have been provided for this course. Uh, I'll see how we shall interact with each other. So as, as, as it now, allow me to stop at that unless you want to interject and just say something. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Uh, you know, I really love um, what you've said, where your business is, what you're looking to do. Um, can you go into more detail as to what services the consultancy uh, the firm provides uh, are you doing are you keeping the books for other companies or individuals or who are your clients and what kind of service do you provide for them uh, basically it is an audit firm 
Okay. And uh, we do audit assurance, taxation and advisory, uh, human resource services, bookkeeping and accounting. That's uh, the, the four pillars of the business. And uh, I don't know how much details you would want. The client, it's a uh, private corporate. I do not hold it uh, public corporate. It's private uh, farms. Uh, we have a uh, uh, lower turnover. Uh, and uh, previously in my employment, I've uh, handled uh, corporates which handle uh, up to one billion. Okay. And uh, that's where I want now to, to, to grow the farm to be able to handle the uh, same client. Right now, I'm having uh, less than uh, 50 clients. And that's what I want to grow because I want to grow the business. And how many clients did you want to get to? Uh, in, in, in two years, I want to go to 100 because uh, I, I, I focus, uh, I, I select on what kind of type of clients I should uh, uh, tackle because of the environment in which I work in. Mm -hmm. And that is what I want to expand from the simple clients to complex clients. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, you, this is a highly profitable business to be in. Uh, you're in the right place uh, once you get to a certain size, because if, you, if, you, if it's structured right, then your infrastructure doesn't change. Your fixed overhead costs don't change all that much because it's human capital. Uh, and then they can take on more. It then becomes sales and marketing, um, and that's where the profit really is. Uh, so I completely agree with you, and especially, obviously, you've been there. You you know um, what the numbers could be, you know, uh, in the profit, what that profit is. Um, so so you're getting it set up, the partnership uh, with your... I allow me to interject and say... Uh, the good thing about the business is uh, it is in a regulated space. Uh, the government regulates uh, what what we do, and we have a regulatory body which oversees what we do. So we have a certain uh, framework of standards to meet in the services we offer. We don't just do things. There is a certain way of doing the things. And uh, there are certain standards which are expected to meet every time you are doing, and certain type of reports which you are supposed to issue. So it's a purely regulated space. The only thing now is to grow the business under such circumstances of regulation. One way I've seen is uh, first uh, to give proper services, targeted services to targeted clients and to ensure the clients are satisfied. And that's why uh, I've, I've opted to have a full-time partner who is able to deal with anything that comes from the way. And then I'm at the apex dealing with the reviews of what the partner is doing and maintaining the staff and doing the administration work in terms of controlling the business and ensuring that disputed to where I wanted to go. Mm. Uh, that's why I, I tried to say I need more information and I need to hear from experts. Thank you. Mm. Very good. You completely understand. Yes. Yes, indeed. The, 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 they operate the same way here uh, in the United States um, and, and uh, just such a great business. Uh, and there are several different ways to grow it. So I'm excited to get to really sales and marketing um, with you and uh, to, to really grow that. In fact, uh, sometimes we have to look at the capacity like, uh, cause you can't, you don't wanna out grow too fast, especially because you have full-time employment and, and other things, you, you, you have to grow um, in, in less, in less depending on how much, what your bandwidth your partner has to be able to, to spend more time in it, that, that makes a difference. But uh, so let me ask this uh, before we go back uh, in support, I'm coming to you next. Here, so please be ready, uh, because this is the last question that I have for this uh, segment this week. 
um, and then I'll be sending this out as a, as a guide for you to be able to do some, uh, some work through uh, and get some of the answers done for next week. But um, what, what are the next steps that you intend to take this week, uh, Mr. Chietti? First, I will want to evaluate uh, what I've been able to do uh, after admitting the other gentleman to, uh, to be full partner. Since I did that is, is, is uh, more than three months, I want to see what has been the impact and then uh, evaluate that with the the budget that is there and the focus that we have because we had to sit down and do a focus of where we are and where we want to be uh, at December. Then after I see that, I will be able to see and uh, know where I am now. Am I doing it right or do I need to focus more on something else? That's one. Uh, Number two, uh, as I've told you, we had already lost about uh, eight staff and then we went to recruit again. We recruited uh, three new staff. Only one old staff had remained. Uh, there, I'm, I'm rolling out a training program for the new staff. So uh, I want to foresee, I mean, or rather oversee implementation of the training program. I've already, uh, people will do the training. My work is to monitor the progress of the training. That will be phase two. Phase three will be to uh, deploy the, uh, the new trained people. They will train for about three months. Then now deploy them into the real business and then evaluate in the next six months, what will be their impact after the training. In the moment, I'm, I'm just uh, spending. Yes, between now and, and next Tuesday, out of those initiatives, what do you expect, specifically, do you expect to do this week? Are you going to be writing some of the training curriculum or is it already written and you're going to be starting the, you know, doing more of the training with them? I will be reviewing, uh, uh, what we have done with the new guy, the, the full-time guy between now and next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. I love that. That helps me know that it's, it, it's, we're going to button down the hatches. You're working on the foundation this week to make sure that it's a strong foundation. Yeah. yeah. Buttoning up what you have so that we can yes. build on something firm. So that's, that's Perfect. fantastic. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, okay. Uh, Zipporah, uh, I'll come to you. Uh, what, um, what do you expect uh, to, to do? What are the appropriate next steps for you between now and next Tuesday's uh, Zoom together? Uh, yes, as for me, after having read the book, I realized that uh, I've been doing very little and especially of being of taking my own records and i realize now i have to sit down and do proper paper. yes okay okay so you're going to yeah keep going yes and uh now uh and also i realize the space that i've been working in needs to be cleaned up nicely if uh if I am if I'm going to uh, have more production because uh, of late the production has been quite uh, low and I need to engage more in it uh, myself so besides the besides that the actual work of uh, cleaning up my space I really need to work on my records which is something I have not been doing quite uh, well I have yes. to admit okay so between now and next week, that's what I, that's the homework that I want you to really focus on is getting that done. Uh, and I'm proud of you uh, for realizing that. 
um, it's one of the things uh, and lessons that I had to learn the hard way. Um, I had to learn it the hard way. Uh, I, and, and, but now, because I learned it the hard way, I keep meticulous records. Uh, like in our system, I, I all the accounting is set up. Every single receipt gets scanned. Uh, you know, all of it is is just the way it should be. Uh, but that's also allows me to, you know, know the numbers. The, 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 what most small business people and, and uh, Mr. Kitty will, will attest to this. Uh, but most entrepreneurs are really bad at keeping books. <laughs> uh, they're, they're accounting and not just accounting. They, if I ask them, how many, how, how many customers do you have? What is your cost of acquisition? What is your, you know, uh, it just, if I just ask basic numbers about their business, many times they can't tell me with certainty exactly. They can kind of say, well, I think it's this half the time I get in and I find out they were nowhere close, you know? And, but yet you can't grow what you don't measure. You can't grow what you don't know. Uh, you can think, you know, but the numbers, they say numbers don't lie. It, it tells you the reality, not what we feel or, or think. And so managing uh, a business to numbers and metrics uh, really gives you something tangible to go by. Now, uh, you'll want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in, in, in different things, but there's also the, the practical management of the business. And you do that by uh, being organized. You do it by uh, knowing the numbers, which we talked a lot about, even with the chicken business, uh, knowing our numbers, you know, uh, how long is this period and that period? Because all of that translates to when can I sell this? Well, if I'm selling eggs, that brings in some revenue. Uh, this, uh, you know, this this amount of revenue. If I sell the whole chicken, I get this amount of revenue, but I don't get any more eggs, so I've got to replace this. You know, so you're dealing with cash flow. Uh, so you have different revenue buckets: a bucket for rev of revenue for for chicken sales, revenue a bucket of egg sales, and so you're going to have these different revenue buckets. Uh, you know that that you have and. And then each one of those will have different times of when they're, they fluctuate. So, um, but that sounds great. I think it's a great use of time. I also love that you're going to kind of, uh, that you're going to work on those things. And um, uh, I think if that gets set up this week and cleaned up, that uh, it will free your mind as well to be able to be creative and do the things that you will want to do uh, for the following week, you know, there are things that can't happen next until what needs to be done right now is done. Um, but the key is getting it done this week. So uh, that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing uh, that. Okay, Helen, uh, I'll turn to you. And if you would kindly unmute and, and share uh, what the next steps uh, for uh, that you're taking in your business this week, based on what we talked about? Uh, for me, uh, the next step is um, working on marketing strategy, because I've been, uh, I've been wondering how to get more students um, or more clients, and um, not to think more about how to get more income, because when I read the book, I realized that it's not about the money, money, it's about uh, people. And so uh, when, when I get more clients, then of course my revenue will, will, will increase. So this week uh, I'll be working on marketing strategy <clears throat> either through uh, social media or word of mouth, yeah. Okay, all right, very good. So let's, let's talk about that for just a second. Uh, I completely agree uh, with what you said. Um, which one is more profitable, the recording studio or the lessons? Uh, the, the, both would be profitable, um, but the lessons are more profitable. 
uh, because they, they, they demand less work. Because I, I don't have stationed teachers there. The, the teachers cap as per the students. Uh, for the recording studio, I have um, two employees. Uh, and so who, who require payment? I mean, if even if uh, we, we don't have, uh, uh, I mean, clients coming, mm. we must pay them at the end of the month. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I want to point out one thing to you uh, because my initial reaction was to start focusing on the music students because that's where the profitability is, or greater profitability. But it's funny that the profitability is over with that, but yet the most expense is over on the least profitable aspect of the business. It's also the most draining on the business. That's mm -hmm. something. Um, so I agree that uh, to focus on the lessons because uh, that would be like Google who they became one of the largest companies in the world by mastering search. They're in the business of search, right? Search engines. Well, Google actually does thousands of other things. They obviously are working on a robotics car. They have, uh, you know, Nest. They've got, you know, home technology. They uh, have VoIP, free VoIP phone numbers for everybody. They've got email. Uh, they've got, you know, Google Docs. They've got all these different, you know, products. And did you know that? All of the other products combined, combined, only represent like 2% of Google's revenue. 98% of Google's revenue still comes from the one thing, search. And they don't like it. They wish it would come from somewhere else, but it doesn't. And they can't. So you do have to figure out at some point if you want to keep making the money over here just to spend it over there, or do you just want to make the money and keep it in this business over here with lessons? Uh, you know. And, uh, and here's the thing, at, at some point, you, you, want, you would end up having your own recording studio, and maybe it's also just a structural thing. Maybe instead of having employees, you need to have contractors that just like you only pay the music teacher when there's a lesson, you only pay the uh, recording, uh, uh, the, the studio person, employee, you only pay them when there's somebody recording. Um, if it's a contractor, they'll absolutely do that. The other thing I would encourage is that you potentially trade uh, an artist studio time in exchange for a certain amount of work hours in the studio per month. So if there's an artist, a, a gospel artist or a recording artist or something like that, they're wanting to cut a CD, you know, you could trade uh, uh, access to the studio for uh, for some work time there, uh, that that would also help that cost tremendously. Now, the last thing is on the marketing because I want to be specific about it. Um, how did you get the the forty students that you have so far? How, where how did you how did they find you? Uh, you started with the word of mouth. Uh, and also the teachers helped to talk to other students to bring uh, them. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of had a, telling friends that we have a music school here. Yeah. So you had a, had that word of mouth. Uh, I want to borrow from something that I was uh, talking to Anthony about. Um, one thing is you could give a referral bonus uh, or fee to your current students. If they're receiving great service, you could incentivize them to share the word. Or, uh, you know, such as uh, anyone that uh, you refer, can, uh, you know, you're going to get, you know, 50% off your next lesson, or you know, something like that. Uh, or, or the and 
So you could go back that way. You It's like having 40 salespeople. You couldn't hire 40 salespeople. You could not afford 40 salespeople, but you can mobilize the 40 clients in your situation, especially because usually people who play musical instruments or do vocals, they know other people who play musical instruments, you know, that's why there's so many bands and, you know, and, and vocalists. So when they know, hey, I'm taking lessons from so-and-so and it's wonderful. Uh, and if they know that they're going to get a discount or, you know, on their next lesson, it needs to be a substantial discount because you're using their social capital because they're talking to people that trust them. Uh, and you want it to be top of mind for them. Like, I want to save a buck and I really want to sell you to get in there because I want to pay 50% less next time, you know, uh, or I want my free lesson or whatever. Uh, so in addition, because and the reason why I asked that, because you could post things on social media and that's good, but that doesn't count towards marketing uh, your business because that's not how where most of your clients are coming from. So it, it's great, it's nice, and it, it, you would also uh, not get, you might get several people interested uh, and you may even get one from it, but it's not gonna be a sustainable marketing approach long-term. Uh, so I gave you the one marketing approach that I think you could do this week, create a little special flyer or email, uh, you know, with a coupon on it that says, you know, make it look like, they have already gotten it, but this is redeemable once you refer somebody to us and they book their first lesson with us or, you know, those type things uh, really make it fun and put your marketing efforts into that because you're also in a, another dimension. You are better serving your existing customers. They're just going to, they're creating stickiness. They're going to stay with you longer because there's more great things in it for them to be a part of your music school. The other uh, marketing activity that I think would be highly beneficial for you. Uh, I want to make sure I recollect it. Um, Well, I think that's the main one then for this week, because if the Lord took it from my mind, then it would have been too much or you wouldn't be able to get it all done or something. So we'll we'll leave that to him. Um, I will say that whenever you have the you, the concerts uh, with, you know, uh, the, all your the recitals, um, that you should have some type of a special promotion, you know, for them. Uh, and also, uh, I, and it, actually the Lord just brought it back to my memory. <laughs> Uh, and that is an introductory price lesson. Have an introductory price lesson. That should be ingrained in your music school. Okay. It's kind of like in the United States, it, there's flight school. And they know, they know if I can get you to one lesson, if I can just get you to one lesson, that you're going to be hooked. <laughs> you're going to want to learn how to fly. You're going to want to, you know, maybe maybe you, you the, the teachers teach them one or two things or they play a note and they never thought they'd be able to play a note uh or it actually they played a chord on the piano or something and it sounded pretty and they never thought they would get that far and it's kind of like in golf when you hit one good swing and you endure a hundred other bad swings but then a good one comes along and you stick with it you know <laughs> and so but i think you have that introductory price lesson and uh and here's the other way of thinking about an introductory price lesson, because that's what we're talking about, Helen, is getting people off the fence, right? They may have been thinking about getting lessons for their children or for themselves, but they weren't exactly, you know, they weren't motivated to do it. But if you gave them a reason to do it, maybe they would. And so maybe if you're, how much is a lesson normally? Uh it's 1,000 for one hour, 1,000 Kenya shillings for one hour. Okay. So I, and we like to give uh, them to pay 10 lessons. So they pay 10,000 per lesson uh, for the 10 lessons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you do is offer uh, 
introductory lessons at you know 1500 or 1800 Kenya shillings one lesson no commitment no packages no anything you know 1800 or 1900 Kenya shillings no commitment you know and so that might be easier uh or or here's the other thing and, and just chew on these ideas this week and decide what you're going to implement but the other one is maybe is maybe what you do is uh say 500 uh kenya 500 kilo, kenya shillings 20 minute lesson or 15 minute lesson mm -hmm. okay what introductory lesson uh make it to where it's so cheap just to try it you know uh uh Yeah, I really like that 20 minute lesson or 30 minute, a reduced lesson mm -hmm. at a greatly reduced fee and then move into selling them the packages. Um, uh, and still do individual lessons, mm -hmm. just make them more. So one of the things that will help you sell more packages is if you sold standalone lessons at you know about 75 percent higher which would be 1750 kenya shillings for a one hour lesson or you buy a pack of 10 lessons and it's only a thousand kenya shillings each but what makes that attractive is that if i bought them by themselves it's a thousand seven hundred fifty so and by doing it that way, it's almost buy one, get one free. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of psychology that goes into marketing and sales. And so uh, I'm telling you, if you promote on social media in a, 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 an insanely low introductory lesson, you don't even need to say how long, it's 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you deem, but but get your five dollar lesson get your 500 kenya shilling you know uh lesson to see if you like this to see if you like this instrument to see what your voice could become to see this or to improve that or you know that the what what you are marketing is just as important uh both the message that you're marketing and the promotion that you're marketing and you have to have the call to action you know, what do you want them to do with the information you just gave them? Do you want them to call you? Do they, you want them to message you on Facebook? Do you want the, you, them to email your business? What do you want uh, them to do? Give them an immediate next step to take. Click here to schedule your appointment now, to schedule your lesson now, you know, and use a service like Calendly or something. I don't know if you've heard that C A L E N D L Y dot com. They have a free service, but it allows it to connect to your calendar. You can choose what days and times and you're available for lessons or, 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 or you can the paid version. You can have different people's schedules. So for your piano teachers and or your recital teachers, uh, the instrument, excuse me. But um, uh, but that's a way to be able to handle all the appointments without somebody manually doing it everyone just goes to uh your website uh you know or the link they give you a custom link and uh you know whether it's 30 minutes or an hour you can decide if you want to leave 15 minutes between each lesson or five minutes between each lesson to grab a drink uh, use the restroom you know whatever needs to be done uh, return phone calls and and then you've got another lesson and it's only on certain days and certain times based on what you would you block off or allow so there's a lot of different ways you can be very efficient, but we'll get into all of that uh, as we move forward. And as your business grows, the operational efficiency of some of these things, there's a lot of resources out there that are there for the taking. Uh, but, but more than anything, it's serving people, doing it right, and uh, doing the hard work, which is like is important laying the foundation this week. And, and, um, and, and, and Francis Kiete uh, just really firming up uh, the, the, the foundation there that he's going to, to rebuild on. And, uh, and then I think the marketing that you're going to do, uh, hopefully, um, you know, this gives you very specific next steps.
both get it mobilizing the 40. Imagine if the 40 students you had now actively promoted and shared on all of their social media and with word of mouth, whatever special offer you were going to make for the month of May only. It's not enough to have a good deal. You have to have a deadline on that deal. See, uh, or else they can wait till August, right? We'll, we'll do it in the fall. Well, you don't, you're not trying to grow your business in October. You're trying to grow it right now, you know? <laughs> uh, so you can run this promotion again, uh, but we'll probably do something different next month and we'll do something different the following month. And we'll, you know, uh, or we'll just make something like this seasonal. It may be something that we do at the start of each school year uh, for students. Maybe it's a student only special. Uh, maybe you have something just for adults at different times. Maybe you have something in January. You know, you've always wanted to play a musical instrument. Book your introductory lesson now. January only. Here's the special because of their new year resolutions or something. You know, uh, but these this is the way you'll want to think about marketing and sales and uh, for us to grow it. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, Anthony, uh, you're the last one here for this uh, exercise. Uh, what do you, uh, what are the specific next steps that you're going to take this week uh, prior to our reconvening next Tuesday? Yes, uh, there are new plans that I'm initiating for Oh. I have a good plan with the new details that I have gotten, especially in the areas that uh, they stay in the city. Uh, like in one place, I just shared the opportunity with one distributor, and in that area, they have. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, you came back, but it's muted. Okay, yeah. So what I'm saying is that uh, uh, in the place that they have identified, we are paying 300 Kenya shillings, which is equivalent to three dollars, distributed in all the, the the distributors, whereby five of them will pay like uh, fifty shillings, Kenyan shillings, and then there is another team whereby I have formed a WhatsApp chat. I am doing the same follow-up. I want to maximize on the sales, and also. There is an idea that came into my mind when I was reading the book that uh, there was a suggestion that uh, we get uh, motivational books. There were several su suggestions. Somebody suggested that we do a book called The uh, Magic of Thinking Big. I don't know the author, but uh, what I got for myself it is about Money Possessions and Eternity. <laughs> a book written by Radi Alcon. So those are some of the plans I have for this week. Yeah, those are good books. Um, uh, Swartz is the author of um, The Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, you have to remember, yeah. we, we had this same book list back in the late 90s. In the 1990s, okay. So the exact things you're talking about doing are things that I did in 1997. Uh, because this yeah, the, model okay. hasn't, the model hasn't <laughs> changed for how to build that, that kind of a business. Yeah. You have to change people's thinking. In fact, let me rephrase that. You can't change people's thinking. Uh, yeah. You know, you can lead them to resources. Uh, but they will change their own mind, and obviously, hopefully, they're surrendered, they're, they're, they're born again and trusted Christ as their Savior and can rely on the Holy Spirit to help them. But, uh, you know, you're it's people can't change their own minds, right? They get stubborn, 
about their own beliefs, even if they're wrong. So we're not going to change we can't, anybody else's mind. We can hardly change our own. Uh, but resources in books do do that. They do that because we can hear the information differently. It doesn't feel like someone is coming at us uh, because they don't know us. They're, they, these, the, the words were written long before they, they knew us, so they couldn't be coming at us or attacking us. They're just so we're able to actually the words actually penetrate and get through, whereas with us, they don't oftentimes. So uh, I do think that those are, uh, you know, uh, good books. Uh, they really just help keep your kind of keep your, your your mind on track. But but I will tell you. Um, I will tell you that it, it was also going, you just have to keep things in perspective. Weigh everything against the word of God. That's That would be my encouragement to you. Is this of the Lord? Does this philosophy of the Lord? Um, there's a difference between thinking positively and thinking biblically. And I did not know that. The positive thinking puts the focus on you. It kind of starts to make you your own God. You can do it. You can do it. You've got this, right? They say that to kind of encourage. You can do it. Um, he won't give you more than you can handle. Are you kidding me? He does that frequently <laughs> because he wants you on your knees, trusting and depending on him. But positive thinking doesn't allow for that. The positive thinking industry. Earl Nightingale is the founder of, of the, what we call the self-help or self-improvement industry. It really began in the, in the early 50s with Earl Nightingale, who's considered the father of self-help, and then Norman Vincent Peale, who was a pastor or, uh, that kind of did more inspirational speeches than biblical preaching. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with it, just not biblical preaching. <laughs> right? It, it would have been good if he was a motivational speaker, bad if you're a pastor, <laughs> right? Who's supposed to be yeah. more yeah. of God. Uh, so I, I have read and I was all wrapped up in that industry for a decade little bit over a decade and it wasn't until i started meeting the people who authored these things where i thought i don't like what i see i don't like the product and it made me reevaluate have i been following somebody blindly that i don't want their results you can only teach what you know. They taught what sounded good, but I look at their life. I don't want that life. And if that's the life philosophy, that's the kind of life I'm going to have. I don't want it. And then especially if it doesn't line up biblically. So that is the caution. It is not a, a you know, something to abstain from. The, the Bible is very clear, you know, if things be of good report, if, uh, you know, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things, right? We don't think negatively. We don't think about worst case scenarios. We're not supposed to spend our time worrying. But the opposite of worrying is not being positive. So the self-help industry 
you know the uh, have you ever heard of the book chicken soup for the soul by mark chicken soup for the soul by mark victor hansen chicken soup for the soul no uh, it was, it's been one of the best selling books in the world um, of the last half century, the last 50 years. And it, it was meeting Mark Victor Hansen, who his whole book is on uh, this life philosophy, how to live a good life. And I met him, and he was losing his family. Kids didn't speak to him, divorce. The life that you want. Had a couple girls going up to the hotel with, room with him after the speech. And this is the man and his philosophy. This is what he thinks is the good life. See. So Just don't swallow it all hook, line, and sinker. Because I did. And it nearly destroyed me. And it has destroyed every person that I've seen that followed hook, line, and sinker like I did. Um, most people don't go with it. But that's also most people aren't successful either. <laughs> you know? So if they, if you do, then if you, if you, if you do, then the tendency is to, is to get off track. And um, the Bible, just remember everything that's positive is not biblical. And so at some point, you're either going to violate the Bible or you're going to violate the religion of self-help. And let me tell you, brother, it has become a religion. There are people mm -hmm. that are addicted. Look at the Tony Robbins followers um, that go to the conferences or events. It is a religion, the self-help industry. Brian Tracy, if I showed you my library, I spent money I did not have, but I would have given my last dollar to learn and grow because I believed that information and having access, kind of like what we're doing here to the right the right mentors, the right or wisdom uh, would get me where I wanted to go. And, um, and, 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 and it did. Unfortunately, I realized that, uh, you know, I climbed the ladder, got to the top only to realize it was leaning against the wrong wall. I had been pursuing the wrong objectives in life. But that's because they told me to be goal oriented. They told me to be focused. They told me to be, uh, uh, positive. They told me I needed to do all these things. So I would read these books over and over and over and over and over. My bo Those books that you mentioned, they're incredibly, I mean, underlined, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, still, I mean, and that's a good book. It's, it's, a, it's a book that would help Christians be more effective in evangelism and witnessing and a number of other things because it talks, teaches them, you know, how to get along with people. And Christians, unfortunately, struggle with that oftentimes. Uh, yeah. especially with the very first chapter, which is titled, Don't Criticize, Condemn, or Complain. Well, most Christians couldn't talk for a month, uh, you know, if they were going to follow that, because they do criticize yeah. and complain nonstop about everything, right? So mm -hmm. um, there are some, some, some things I'm just saying, like with everything, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Take the good parts, but base cast it all against: Is this biblical? Is this of God? Is this is this biblical? Follow His word. Yeah, His word is truth. Yeah. So, and the Lord can, and and this is what the Lord's done in my life. He has He blessed me more in a single day in something that I could not control, financially speaking more than all of the years of all of the strategy and all of the positive thinking and all of the 20 hour work days, 21 hour work days, seven days a week, ignored birth, my birthday and everybody else's, ignored every holiday because I was going to work 20 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
until I got there. No one was going to outwork me. And I still couldn't get to where I really wanted to be. And in a single day, the Lord did more than all of those years combined with, 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 with basically very, very little effort. I'm telling you, it's more important that you have the right perspective and direction and please him than all of the finagling and all of the humanistic philosophy that this world has to offer. Complete mm -hmm. surrender to Jesus is still the, the only way to have a kingdom business. Complete surrender and complete abandonment. So very good. Well, I have enjoyed class today. I, I trust that all of you have as well. We have covered so many things, uh, but I, I want you to understand, and you've been able to see how by hearing everyone else's enterprise and business and what my counsel was to them, you're able to apply it to yours in some way. And it shifts how you think. It expands how you think about business. You start to see opportunities more clearly. Or like at the, even after I went through some others, the poor had some ideas of, oh, now I know exactly what I need to do this week. And that's what I am, am interested in at this point is the, the actual things, the, the action behaviors that you're going to do this week. Because you don't want to get on next week and say, oh, I know I said we'd do this, but haven't done it yet. You know, so you don't procrastinate. Uh, you're going, you may be tired, but get it done anyway. Get it done. Just do it. And that will be great. Well, let me close us in prayer. Father in heaven, we praise your name. We pray that you've been glorified by our time together. There is no wisdom apart from you. There is no knowledge. There is no understanding. And what's really ironic is in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you say, trust the Lord with all our heart, lean not into our own understanding. The very understanding that you give us, you say, but don't trust in it. Lean not on it. We lean completely on you and trust completely on, in you. We acknowledge you in all things, that you may direct our paths. Father, I pray for each student, each business owner, each entrepreneur, that you would bless them, be with them this week as they take the action that you've laid on their hearts. And Father, may we not be in a hurry for the results that you're going to give in due time. You're dealing with all of us differently, Lord. We are all in different seasons of our life. Deal with us gently. Teach us what you're trying to accomplish in our lives. And may patience have her perfect work, as James talked about. And we be obedient to you and to the work of the Lord this week. And would you bless and prosper the work of our hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Blessings to each of you. Blessings. Have a glorious week, and we'll see you same time next Tuesday. Amen, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Zipporah. Yes. Thank you. Yes, but on the issue of the of the logging in, we see some of the people struggling, and they keep calling. Hope that will be addressed. Logging in where? To, to this call? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's probably an issue with um, their their Wi-Fi and bandwidth, I would su su suppose, maybe, because... Uh, they, they, are, they are saying they can't find the link eh, as we are what, trying to look. Eh? They don't oh, know where to press the link. I see, okay. The link we have in the classroom, yeah. uh, we have in the course. Um, so I'll make sure we get that because it's the same link every week. Uh, it'll be the same same link. So uh, 
Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that'll be fine. All right. Very good. Thank you all very much. Have a blessed day. Okay, week. thank you.